Let's look at some examples. Here's the example we talked about in the video lecture where we described the Shapley value. And we looked at this example because the core is empty. For the game with this characteristic function. Now, even though the core is empty, we still need to have some idea of what a fair payoff vector might be. And here it's going to be relatively easy because you'll notice that this characteristic function for this game in coalitional form has a very simple property of symmetry. Each player plays an entirely symmetric role. Player 1, player 2, and player 3 each add the exact same amount as any other one when you add it to any coalition. If you add 1 to the empty coalition, that adds 1 to the value. If you add the same is true for player 2, the same is true for player 3. If you add player 1 to a coalition that already is just player 2, you add 3 units to the value. You go from the value of player 2 is 1 to the value including player 1 is 4. And you get exactly the same result if you added player 3. And the same is true in every possible way. You'll see from the way the, the this characteristic function is constructed, you can interchange the players and it doesn't make any difference. Because it's symmetric, we can conclu conclude immediately that for the by the symmetry axiom for the Shapley values that phi1 of v is the same as phi2 of v is the same as phi3 of v. And of course, by efficiency, we need the sum of those to be the highest total, which is 5. And so the only way to have the three entries be equal and sum to 5 is to have each one be 5 thirds. So this is the unique Shapley value for this particular game. Here's another example. This is an example of the game that we analyzed in the videos for the previous day when we computed the core, uh, we found the core uh, for this characteristic function. There were a lot of payoff vectors in the core. We showed a certain region in three-dimensional space there. How are we going to compute the Shapley value for a game like this? Well, you see it's a bit complicated. Player 1 has a value by himself of 1. Player 2 by himself is just 1. Player 3 by herself is just 2, etc. The way we can complete, compute the Shapley value is to decompose this characteristic function v for our game into a sum of special characteristic functions w sub s. And we're going to do this by finding inductively what these constants c sub s are for each possible coalition in the game. Now, if it's a large game, of course, this could be a lot. Here we have just three players. Uh, there are only eight possible subsets, and of course we're going to ignore the empty set because c sub phi is zero. That won't come in. So we really have only seven computations to make. How do we get the constant that we use for the coalition with just player one? Well, by the rule we had, you take the value for player one. So for these singleton co coalitions, it's easy to compute c sub s for the the constant C of the singleton set 2 is just the value for that single set, singleton set, which is 1. C for the single, singleton set 3 is just the value for that singleton set, which is 2. Now, to get the constants for larger sets, we proceed already knowing the constants for their subsets. C for the set 1, 2 is just the value for that set 1, 2, and we subtract the Cs for each subset. The only subsets, of course, are the set containing 1 and the set containing 2, and the empty set, but we're always going to ignore that since that's 0. So we just get 3 minus 1 minus 1, which is 1. The constant C for the set 2, 3 is similarly the value for that set 2, 3, minus the constant we've already computed for 2 and the constant we've already computed for 3, and we get 4 minus 1 minus 2, which is 1, and a similar computation for C of the set 1, 3. The value for the set 1, 3, minus the constant for 1, minus the constant for that singleton set 3. That's 4 minus 1 minus 2, which is also 1. And finally, the constant that we have for the set 1, 2, 3 is the value for that whole uh, uh, grand coalition, 1, 2, and 3. And we subtract the constants for every subset, again, ignoring the empty set. 
we subtract c of the singleton set one, the singleton set two, etc. And we get nine, that's the value for the grand coalition, minus these other constants, so minus one, minus two, one, minus two, minus one, minus one, minus one, and we end up with the constant two. So for these constants that we just computed, our characteristic function is a sum over all of these subsets of n of these constants, the c sub s's that we just computed, times the special characteristic functions, w sub s. And here's the way I've written it out. Like that with the exact constants that we've computed. Mostly ones, but there are a couple twos in there. Well, how do you compute phi of v? This is our payoff vector, phi 1 of v, phi 2 of v, phi 3 of v. Well, for phi 1 of v, we look at this and we say, which ones contain a 1? Which subsets contain a 1? Because remember, uh, for the special characteristic functions, w sub s, their value will be 0 if you have a, an entry i, which is not in s. So if we want phi 1 of v, the i equals 1 case, we look at all of these that contain a 1. These are the four that I've shown. And you ask, what is phi of w1? Well, that's just 1. What is phi of w12? Well, that's 1 half, because remember, the set 1, 2 is a set of size 2, so you take 1 over that set size, the size of the set. Phi of w of the set 1, 3 is, again, 1 half, because that's a set of size 2. And phi of w1, 2, 3 is a third, but we have two of those, so we have two thirds. So we have 1 plus a half plus a half plus two thirds, that's just eight thirds. For phi 2, we look instead at the sets that contain 2, and we do the same thing, and we get here the same computation. Applying phi to each one, you get 1 plus 1 plus, I'm sorry, 1 plus a half here, plus a half, plus 2 times a third, or 8 thirds. What about phi sub 3? Phi sub 3, when I apply it to v, which is this whole thing, uh, gives us zero except for these terms, the sets where the sets contain three. And what do we get? Here we have a two times w sub three, so that gives us a two here instead of the ones that we had before. But then we also add one half, I'm sorry, one half for this one, one half for this one, and two thirds for that one. So we get two plus a half plus a half plus two thirds, which is 11 thirds. In other words, phi of v for this game, the characteristic, our Shapley value for the characteristic function is precisely eight thirds, eight thirds, and 11 thirds. So that tells us that a, a fair payoff according to the Shapley value for this game is that player one would receive eight thirds, player two would get eight thirds, and player three would get 11 thirds. Now, we might ask, is this Shapley value in the core, in other words, is this an imputation which is stable under all coalitions? The answer one can compute here is, in this case, yes. Uh, certainly, for it's individually rational. Each player receives more than the value they could get entirely alone. Eight thirds is bigger than the one. Eight thirds is bigger than this two here, and eleven thirds is bigger than that. Two. I'm sorry, the second one, 8 thirds is bigger than that one, and the 11 thirds is bigger than that two. And if we look at any pair, for example, player one and player two, 8 thirds plus 8 thirds is certainly better than the three they could get by themselves. For players uh, two and three, 8 thirds plus 11 thirds is better than the four. And for player one and three, similarly, 8 thirds plus 11 thirds is better than four. And the total that they receive, 8 thirds plus 8 thirds plus 11 thirds, is 27 thirds or 9. That's, is, of course, as it has to be exactly the value of the grand coalition. So in this case, the Shapley value for this game in coalitional form for the characteristic function of the game is an imputation which is in the core and provides a nice stable payoff that should be fair to every player. But again, let me remind you, there are many games that don't even have a core, that, where the core is empty, I should say. Or there are games which have a non-empty core, and the Shapley value does not necessarily have to even be in that core. There's an example in one of the problems in the exercises that shows you this.
So this is, in some sense, independent of the idea of core, but they're both both ideas are trying to get at the same thing, what constitutes a fair payoff for the different players in a game.